all right and welcome back to the channel so this week's going to be a little bit different because i have a training course to attend to at uh, monk's training for three days which is actually part of the fox group now monk's training so the issue that i've got is my content obviously but the director i've decided i'm going to send him out on the road with a couple of lads just to show you guys um a bit more about the backgrounds of the lads really um so luke has a few jobs to do on a crusher and a um a d6t there's a few other bits and bats i don't know whether the director will get it on camera or not but uh he'll try and get it on camera for you whilst i'm away but it is six o'clock in the morning monday morning so i will be in the before the course and after the course the course is eight till four uh, it is like a refresher course for three days, yeah, so I mean when it comes to health and safety within the workplace um, Foxy is all over it, believe me, he's all over it, so if he sees something in the yard that's not quite right We'll get it in the neck as managers to make sure it's right, basically So most of the lads have done the course already. I have a, a, an extra forklift course to do next week but um but yeah i kind of put it off to be the last one to do it if you will and now it's my time to do it so i might even get the director down to monks just to show you what it's all about so yeah this morning um i've got a crusher that's having a problem with its uh pressures on the drawback so we'll go and try and sort that out in a minute um the other problem with the course is i wanted me son in for a day whilst he's back from canada uh, to try and get a bit of content with him just for a bit of a family thing really but that's going to knacker that up now because he goes back to Canada on Thursday so anyway it is what it is um, and yeah let's uh, let's crack on direct so we'll go down the yard and see what we can find wrong with this crusher all right so we've got it here we've got a PT330 power screens crusher that has been a diamond up until the last six months basically We've uh, been getting a few little issues with it. So, first of all, we'll fire her up. And the issues that they've been having, yeah, the lads have, uh, over the weekend, were using it. And they uh, can't get pressure to the drawback. So, the drawback is the spring assembly with inside here. That little toggle round there. That needs to be holding pressure all the time. So when you fire the machine up, like we're doing now, within a minute, we should get a little green symbol, a little, a little green start button here to fire the machine. But well, let's just see what happens. If it starts beeping in a minute, then we know the problem still exists. So I brought Luke down. All right, lad. There you go, PC. So we've got a problem with the drawback. So... We're not getting any pressure, yeah? Yeah. So I'm thinking it could be the pressure sensor, right? Um, let's just go around this side, I'll show you. Yeah. Always a busy, always a busy yard on a Monday morning. Right, Luke, you so you know, this is the valve block for the drawback sensor, yeah? Yeah. For the drawback, shall I say. This is the sensor for the drawback. Now then, all I can think, well, I'm hoping, that it's that that's the problem that's causing us the issue yeah and then i have got a sensor so we'll just fire knock the machine off yeah we'll just take this off yeah try it. and try it just knock the machine off get spanners out we'll take that off hey luke Yeah. 140 quid. I'm hoping it's this. 
I have done a few uh, tests on this before that was leading back to to it being this. What it might not be. We're going a certain way that one. Get that little steps loop, just so you can look in the top of that to see where that. So it's got a little notch in it there. That'll have to go with a little notch up here, so we're better just having a quick look just to see where the position of that little notch is. I mean, so we run power screen and McCluskey crushers and people are always asking me what's the best well this is the equivalent to a J40 uh, an R400X is uh, equivalent to a J45 and me personally it's it's a hard one to judge because I worked on them both for years um, and you don't really get much problems with any of them to be fair only, only until they get about three years old or about 5,000 hours on them so let's just fire it again. It all depends really on uh, how they get treated when they go out on hire. You know, you can go out to a site and uh, you can see people trying to push material through the jaw. Abu abuse, should we say, abuse. Just see if we uh, uh, might still not be building pressure. No. Right, so it's not the sensor. Let's just try it in uh, go up to the jaw. We've got 19 bar. Jaw moving now. Yeah. Right, so the draw's moving. So this button here that I'm pressing, director, is if the jaw was to be full of material, right, and the machine got shut down, the machine wouldn't fire. Right, so that's like automatic mode. It's swinging the jaw. You can go forward and backwards with it, and that clears the jaw, yeah, if the jaw box is full. Now then. Again, we should get a green button here. We're not getting any pressure. So, director, that is going to mean I'm going to have to give uh, John a call, if you remember John from the last ones and uh, we'll do a bit more diagnostics on it. Well, I'm disappointed at that, I thought it would have been that, that sensor. Uh, so I'm not happy about that, so this is the solenoid for the draw, for the drawback, yeah? So Luke, just see if, when I fire the jaw, see if there's anything there, you know what I mean? Yeah. See if you feel that get old somehow. Right, um, this alternates the pressure. So maybe we could even just try tweaking it a little bit, see if we get some pressure. But if you start messing with the pressures without a pressure gauge on, uh, it, it is a little bit iffy. You know what I mean? And we've not got pressure gauges for this, so you'll only need a quarter of a turn at a time on that. This also help can, can bypass the, the check valve, and that oh, that should pull out easy. That do not put. See if you get all that, we can pull it out and turn it off a turn. That's it. Turn it off a turn. Send it back in. I 
that's it. Right, let's just try that again. If not, see if we're getting any lights on these solenoids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You go down to loop, director. Anything lighting up on it? No. No. I'm wiring somewhere. Right. So yeah. what we got up here? Track? Is that a fast track? Yeah. Uh, yeah. We swap the coils over and save it's the coil that's done that. Bit. Yeah, I've done that before. I've done that before. Put that back into the setting it was before. Yeah. Yeah. Let's just crack that. Putting pressure gauges, we're at risk of damaging. We're at risk of uh, putting too much pressure in us. Uh, Luke said he's got a gauge that might fit on that, so he's just gone back up to the workshop to uh, travel up. So we'll just go in the crushing shed. Right, so I don't know why we put a 45 back in the shed. We were supposed to have stopped crushing. So all I can presume is this material's come in for a job somewhere and they need it pretty quick. But we talked about cleaning this building. We're cleaning behind the walls, if you remember, on the last one or the one before. So all that has been done. The building is ready for a, for a wash. Well, there might have been a change of plan that I don't know about. We'll have to find out what's going on here. So we've got the little 105 scalper outside. We crush into the 105 and pull the fines out of the material to get clean crush. There's a conveyor that will go under the 105 to uh, stack it further back in the yard. So as you can see, all the yard's been cleaned up because we were going to stop this process, so... There must have been a change of plan. Hey! But yay! How come we're crushing again? I don't know. You don't know? Crushing. Is it? So are we not doing the top toilet shed now? No. No? Very sound. Sound, sound, sound. Alright, sound. I got a Tom on the shovel. So what happens usually? The usual process is we get as much crush done as we can at night time so all the wagons come in the morning and get loaded with crushing out but the plan has changed to, uh, to do all the crushing up at Jackson's so something's changed Anyway, I'm more concerned about this because I've got to get to my course Luke's got his set of pressure gauges. You know how to use these? Yeah. <laughs> right, just make sure you got right fit in there for this, yeah? yeah so. Let's just see if we're getting any pressure. Yeah. Right, so we've got the pressure gauge on. This is a check valve. This little screw here will alter the pressure. 
so let's just see if we get anything, yeah? I'm gonna fire it up. Right, so you just had no pressure then when we tried to fire, yeah? Uh, if you ever move this on the check valve, always remember where the position was. Because that, that half a turn there could be the difference between 40 bar and 50 bar. Right, so it's obviously something that I'm not too sure about, so I'm not going to mess about, I haven't got time now, yeah Luke, I'll, uh, I'll speak to John later, and I might give you a call to uh, get back on it, alright? Yeah. Right director, I'm going to have to get to my course, um, I'll catch you when I get back. Right, so as I say, I'm going to get to my course. Uh, Another good thing that's happening this week is we've got awesome earth movers uh, giving us a little visit. Oh, you should get one in, by the way. Milwaukee hat, Milwaukee headlight. Yeah, awesome earth movers are turning up and uh, going to uh, do a bit of an interview with me and on the fox. So hopefully we'll be able to get the fox on uh, on camera in this episode, but I might, uh, depending on what the director gets on site, I might end this episode on Awesome Earth Movies turning up. See you soon. So, Bradley's off on his uh, training course this week, three-day course. I've done it, Jay's done it, and it's just one of them things you have to do it nowadays. So, um, me and director, we're going to go in some wings to put on a D6T. Um, two snap studs, uh, they won't do it. Bit of a job, and then we've somewhere else to go. So, yeah, we'll get that done. Let's get down to the plant yard and get these welded on. Yeah. yeah. Right, yeah. All oh, them wear plates on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Another job just uh, just turned up. We got here today. This dozer and the two foot digging board, trenching bucket. Once. Uh, just wants bosses just cutting down a bit so you can fit it on this digger. Oh, that's what it is.
Job done. Uh, to get this job, Marty's just told us I have to go to bake up and uh, the seat cracked or something, so go and get that done. We'll have to do this tomorrow or later on. Check out the director, new book boots on. Snap seat, director. Get it stripped down and see what. This is the thing with drivers, they won't even try to look at it. It's too easy to ring us and get us to drive from Preston to Bacon. It's designed to do this. So you have a latch there. Look at that, fixed it. <laughs> <laughs> Another job just uh, landed up whilst we're here. Bolts are loose on this edge, so we'll try it once new bolts really, but put inch gun on, tighten them up and send it be around. <laughs> Much chance of turning them up, director. We'll come back with some new bolts. Oh, definitely no chance they've been welded on. Alright, so we're at the uh, J45 at Bakeup. Baz, uh, Baz inspected this last week. There's a list of jobs to do. We retract the belt, flip the jaw. Um, magic eye had broken off, so fix that. We're waiting, the wires were damaged, so as a temporary measure, I just sort of rewired it back in. Um, it's not the best, but we're waiting for parts. Um, we were waiting for this, we didn't do it on Friday, so I'll do it now, just waiting for it to turn up. Yeah.
to Inspection plate up now and that's that done. Not the best job but I'm gonna be done on it. So we just uh, just landed back at Plant Yard and um, try and uh, try and get it done this time. The job we originally come to do, get it lifted up and uh, cut these bits off. Not going to bother. Not going to bother taking these wear edges off because I'd have thought this machine will be going before so long and get it back out and get it working again. Make sure it's isolated.
All right, director. So I've just finished my first aid course, should we say, today. Just thought I'd come and check on Luke. Did you get a bit of footage with him today while you've been out on the road? Yeah? Sound, so that is Ray X400 plate, that that you're using there. So I, well, I hope it is, yeah? Ray X400. This blade does actually need a skin, but we're selling the dozer, or I think it's going to be one of the next dozers to go anyway, so we're not going to put a skin on it. We're just going to put some wings, another wing on it this side. And can you see how it's gone through there? We're just going to weld that little, that, probably about two mil thick, two, three mil thick that blade now. So if anything, to keep, just to keep it going, we might put a bit of a plate on it like that. But we've got an eye for it, so once these wings are done, it'll go out, all right? And I've got another course tomorrow, so the director, you can go back out with him tomorrow. Yeah? Wow. Oh, well, how many hours on this? 600 on that. 600 hours. Massive. Right, so this is a Louis Gong 922F, yeah? They weigh about 23 tonne these, do they? 23, yeah. 23 tonne. 600 hours. 600 hours. You know what I mean? So this is a typical example. Plant tire. Now, for, for all those people that give it, oh, you're rough, you, man. You're rough, you, man. I keep seeing it in comments. You're rough. Yeah, but when it's plant hire, that's what it says above the door, plant hire, yeah? We hire any machine out to anybody that has insurance, yeah? Bill. So, now it's getting to end of November. We will get more machines coming in, closer to Christmas we get, but it's like this every year. Job just slow down a little bit for everybody. January, bang, yard's empty. Right, direct, you carry on with Luke. Well, you know that we uh, like to show the good and the bad. Um, just welding these wings on and uh, seem to have had a bit of a bit of an electrical uh, thermal event in my generator so we've uh, I've called Cal to uh, come and finish the job off and um, I'm going to have to fix this because I need it first thing in the morning for a job at Jackson's so it is what it is sometimes we'll finish it off <laughs> right Joe
Right, well that's the job done. Carried over from Luke there after his little uh, malfunction. But uh, it's ready to go out on iron now, which is the main thing. So, uh, yeah, job done. Right, so I've just arrived at Monk's training, and this is Chris the boss. And this is my last day of training. So this is my third day, and today we're doing grinding wheels. We've just done a few refresher courses on this, this last few days. So Chris, just tell us a little bit about what you do here, because this is part of the Fox group now. Right, well, it's uh, general plant training, um, health and safety training. So we do national plant, CPCS. Um, we've started doing CPC uh, training for wagon drivers, quarry passport. Uh, for all the lads that work on the quarries at Jackson's and up at Bakeup. So uh, now you're part of the Fox Group, I presume all employees come here or you go to them? That's the general plan, yeah. yeah. We're basically yeah. the group's yeah. training facility, yeah. Yeah. if you like. And you've been with us, what now, year 12? Yeah, it was January, uh, start of this year, that it was uh, all announced by uh, by the Fox Group. Yeah. So, I mean, it's not that foxes, you know what I mean? You've got, you got over like 800 employees, you get your own training facility, don't you? You know? So anyway, I've got my last day of training today. I've got grinding wheels to do today. <laughs> so I'm actually going to be learned how to... Well, it's more of a refresher. This is a refresher week for me, you know, so... Anyway, we'll crack on, get done. Direct to you, get up to Jackson's. And tomorrow we'll get on to some more content, yeah? Cheers, Chris. Great director. He just rocked up and... Uh... Just about finished to be fair, just called me. Um, just done a just done a quick inspection what I did it yesterday on this um, J50 to a bearing gone on the head drum. Um, I've just tightened jaw up, there's a few things I've defected which uh, which we will do eventually. Um, the jaw's about to get it ready to be spun on it, so we'll probably do it then. I've uh, patched the, the mesh in the screen and um, yeah, about it really. We're going to uh, we'll get to plant yard, some snap stuff to get out of that decent.
Oh, just uh, nipped a pair tech on the way back to the yard. Need some uh, grease adapters. I mean, um, hydraulic pipe and fitting supplier, so one of these lads will be able to sort me out, I would have thought. Yeah. Bit of modification on the uh, grease gun as well. Come on, you do want to get involved. Right, I want a lot of them adapters. Right. Like a little tub, don't yeah. worry about that. And I want to make, I've got a picture here. This is where like the, the artwork comes. It's a lot of them. We'll take one of them. Yeah, yeah. For all like, you know, different sizes. Oh, so you want all the different Yeah, like here. that size, that size, that size. Right. And then Paul has one of these in his van. Ah, oh, yeah. I want one of them. Yeah. And some adapters. But then, you know them grease fittings, them ones? Mm -hmm. I need some ends to go on my grease gun. But I want to make some pipes. So, can you put this on like a quick release? And then just have like three different pipes so I don't have to mess about. Yeah, we can do. You know what I, you know what I mean? So yeah, I can yeah. have like a little so, pipe with that end on. Yeah. A little pipe with a big end on and a little right. pipe with a, you know, so... I, just because like every every crusher I go to yeah, it's got has a different size on. fitting on it. Mm. That corn crusher has two different sizes of them on it. Yeah, yeah. I'll give you my number. You can forward, forward that picture to me. Yeah. And forward out me everything else, and I'll get everything sorted out for you. Yeah. Right, Sam. So. Yeah, yeah, go on. Right, director. Get back to that D six. Yeah, yeah. Right. Just got back in plant yard. Um, just got some. Uh, Snap studs to uh, extract out of this frame, put step back on, keep the job right, doesn't it? Um, this way, I did this last night, bit of rewiring on my generator. It's uh, It did me three years before wires got hot, so I've put some thicker wiring. I'm no electrician, but it, it'll do my job, so yeah. Good job. 
Grand job. That's what we like to see. Always keep your welding glove on though, because you'll end up with burn marks like that. That was from a snap stud a couple of weeks ago. Look at that. Easy job. Right director, I'll get these uh, only 8.8 seed bolts um, get this put on. I'll get off to my next job. You best go and get some editing done because uh, Baz will be done soon and you'll have plenty to do with him, won't you? <laughs> Right, I'm back from the course. So, all oh, you lads have done course, haven't you? Oh, yeah. That was actually painful being shown how to put a <laughs> grind in this kind of grinder. But anyway, it is what it is. We've got to stay up, with, up to date with health and safety. Yeah, refresh your courses for us, man. Um, right, so today, today we've got awesome earth movers coming to visit us, yeah? So, I don't know how that's going to pan out. First time they've been, so we'll see what happens. Uh, Cal, I've got a little tube over here that I want you to try. It's a little suction tube off a fuel tank, yeah? Do you reckon you could weld that with TIG? I'll give it a go. Well, it's a little bit thin, that, doesn't it? I don't think you'll be able to, but you never know, you might be able to do it, yeah? Yeah. Paul, we've got a little uh, 409 Maximus round corner. Look at him, look at the boy. A little 409 Maximus around the corner, yeah, we got an eye for it yesterday. Uh, it's got 20 mil meshes in it at the moment, it wants 8 mil in. Well, uh, I did order some yesterday, right, so they'll be in at dinner time. Right. If you go around, open it up um, and get the meshes in when they come, yeah. A Maximus 409 is a, is a three-way split screener. It's, it's got a, a finger deck in the top deck and a 20 mil on the bottom deck. So what happens there is when the material's loaded in from the feeder, it'll drop onto the fingers, all the oversize will drop off onto the front belt, all the other material runs through onto the screen. Yeah, so you, if it's got 40 mil screens in it, you get 40 mil above coming off one belt and 40 mil below coming off the next belt. So these guys who have actually ordered it are putting 20 mil material in it. So that's why we're putting such a small mesh in at eight mil. So nothing's gonna come off the front belt. Um, so you all right with that? Do you want to take Jay with you or not? Yeah, can be. No, go and give him a lift, Jayla. <laughs> I want it opening up, I want it washing, greasing, ready to go Monday morning, yeah? Luke, we're going to start a couple of buckets with Cal. Yeah, we've got a couple of buckets in the workshop at the moment. So like I say, buckets run through the workshop all the time. We've got two 20 tonne digs in at the minute. I don't know if I want two 20 tonne digs running at the same time. I'll just have to check around the corner, see how many we've got in the stockpile. I've got a little 13 tonne ditcher there. Cal, do you want to sort these edges out? Yeah. So just stack them, stack them sideways for now, yeah? So, director, we've just had a load of stock come in here now. 
Mm. Who's got who's got delivery note for this? There should be 30 mil then. They'll like 25 mil to me, we've got tape on you. So I ordered, unless they've to come yet, I ordered 200 by 20, which of them, 250 two by 25, which of them, 150 by 20, them, and there should be some 300 by 30. It's 30, isn't it? But it's not 300. It's 250. <sighs> Has anyone got a delivery note for this? This that's come in? No delivery note with it? Yeah, yeah, Have you got it? Oh. Right. I'll just check that. Carl, get that stack neat and tidy, yeah? All right, let's crack on. Yeah, there's no, there's no 300 by 30, but they sent me 250s instead of 300s. But anyway, let's get to it. Right, Luke, I've just got a phone with Dave Scott Jackson's. He's got a DL420 round at Lydiate Lane. Yeah. What's the head's turning, yeah? Turning or replacing, I'm not sure which one it is. Um, so they should have the, the bolts on site to do that. Or where are we up to with the grab bucket ram? Uh, I spoke to him yesterday. Uh, new rod. Uh, the time it messed about, it's cheap. To, new rod, new piston, reseal. Right, uh, so this is our spare ram, but the block is actually... It's damaged, isn't it? Damaged, yeah. So we can't use... Well, it's too small anyway for the grab bucket, that ram. Yeah, so we couldn't have used it anyway. But yeah, so we will... Turn it around quick enough. Like, really? It'd be quicker for him to make a rod and a piston than it will to mess about trying to fix it. Right in your... So I've got a supplier around corner, Reynolds. Yeah. Lee Reynolds. Uh, we just dropped a, well yesterday, we dropped a, another ram off that had pulled the rod off the piston. Yeah, all the threads had gone on it. So he's going to build us a new rod and a new piston, reseal it and bring the ram back. So our spare grab bucket at the minute is down, as you noticed the other week. We've got 10 grab baggers out there at the minute, I think. So, this is a common occurrence. We grab buckets to get a lot of pain. All right, Luke, so I'll leave you with that one. Yeah, Sound. All right, so awesome move movers just turned up. This is Dean, one of the bosses there. So I think what we'll do, we'll end this chapter here and now, and uh, we'll catch up on this on the next one. So please like, subscribe, and check out our other episodes. Cheers.